413k. All right, guys, welcome back to Stuck on an Island, where I'm stuck with you guys and we're always smiling. It's a beautiful evening in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. And um, this video is going to be kind of long. For those who need things put in order, I'm going to put the video in order. So you're going to look at the base of the video, you'll see the different chapters. Now, what inspired this video? I was on TikTok, or someone sent me a post, and it was um, addressing the cost of living in Kingston, Jamaica. And then, of course, I find like on social media these days, you have, how can I say, you have a bunch of people who are trying to get like famous or, I don't know, they say the most outrageous things without really thinking. Now, someone commented on the video and they said, ah, oh, whatever his prices he quoted was incorrect and blah, blah, blah. Now, in this video, I'm going to take it from more of an average point of view because, let's face it, I can say to you in this video that I can get a place in Kingston, Jamaica for $10,000 per month and it would not be impossible. There is a possibility for that. Maybe you have a friend who has an extra room and he wants to help you out and he says, just pay the electric bill. There you go, $1,000 per month. But is this the actual truth for the general public? So I'm going to try to share a lot of my personal experiences and experience that I know that other persons have had. If I can um, show like images of like bills or things like that, I will definitely do that. But I'll definitely not come on here and just speak a bunch of things just because I'm trying to make a point. All right, so right now I'm gonna actually head in. I'm just getting back from the gym. So I'm gonna walk in to my apartment. And also in this video too, I'm gonna show you comparatively the cost of things living here versus living in Kingston, Jamaica. And let me just make this plain, clear, and simple. Jamaica is one of the most beautiful places in the world. If you have the money, or if it's gonna be cheaper than where you are living now, definitely go there, man. Jamaica has everything that I think a person can possibly need to survive. It's beautiful, it's amazing. I can, man, I lived there all my life. That is home for me. All right, so I'm gonna head in and then we're gonna address some other stuff. All right, people, so just got in and before I left, I put some clothes in the dryer, came back, the clothes are not dry. The reason is here the dryers use gas, gas to operate the dryer, which is, it's different. So I completely forgot about that. Now, why am I even mentioning that? If you look in the background here, you may or may not have noticed that there's no linen on this pull-out couch, sofa bed, whatever you call it. Now, I want you guys to observe. We know people in the Caribbean, we are very fast, we're inquisitive. I want you guys to do that in this video because I want to give you a tour of the Airbnb without walking around the camera and trying, nah. I'll position the camera in different angles, different ways as I talk to you and be fast. Just look around and see what the Airbnb has to offer and then you can decide, you know, is it cost efficient, you know, what's happening. Um, I'm also reheating some food, so things like food, I'll also break it down and compare or, you know, get the idea of the costing of, speaking of the devil, my food is actually red. I forgot, the moment I heard ding, I've become a Ding ambassador and I completely forgot to tell you guys about it. So let me let me pull up the email that they sent to me and just read what they said. So it says, Ding is the fastest way to send mobile credit directly to friends and family phones in Jamaica. And I don't need to read the email to be honest because I have been a Ding customer for, I would say easily for five years. So I'm gonna share my personal experience, but first of all, I have to give you guys a savings. So, if you use my code, SOYVLOGS, you're going to get 50% discount on the first time you send mobile credit internationally. So if you are in the US or Europe or wherever, and you're gonna be sending credit to family or friends or your boo, whatever, back home to Flow or Digicel, you're gonna send it and you're gonna get 50% off using my discount code. Now, what is my experience using Ding? First of all, we're talking about saving money. With the app, I've noticed over the years, 
um, without using anyone's discount code, there's always little promotions. You know, if you pay for a certain plan, you get certain discounts. So you'll be saving money using the app in the first place. Why did I start using the app? I started using the app because I found it really ridiculous walking to the shop to buy credit or mobile top up, whatever you call it, to add to my phone. I just found it weird when I had a debit or a credit card. We're in the 21st century. People are working from home to save money or people shop from home online to save money. I mean, it was basically a no brainer. How is it helping me now? When I went to Ghana, when I went to Mexico, when I went to the US, and when I came here to Dominican Republic, you're gonna notice something. When you go to different countries where there might be a language barrier or you might not be able to find things quite easily, it's hard. So I remember when I signed up for Claro, because Ding doesn't only work with Digicel or Flow, they work with a lot of other service providers around the world. So when I went to Claro the first time, it was hard for me to communicate what exactly I wanted, what data packages, you know, things like that. Funny enough, in the DR, I, it cost me 145 Colombian pesos per week because for some strange reason I have to put on put on the plan per week and not every single month. So it's 145, which is somewhere probably like two dollars and thirty cents, something around that region. Pretty cheap if you ask me. And I'm getting five gigs of data that works out well. Now the issue is, if I were to do that every single week, go talk to somebody, it would be a a pain so I use the Ding app and with the Ding app I'm able to just go online make my payments and I'm good to go recently I found out that they what are they doing they're now doing like gift cards so if you want to send like let's say you want to get your family member like Island Grill or any company that's working with them you can send them a gift card and they can go to these stores and just get food Yo, bro, that is ridiculously good. Anyway, speaking of food, I'm super hungry. I'm gonna grab a bite and then we're gonna go into the details of this video. I'm gonna put, like I said, everything in a chapter so it's easily arranged and we're gonna look at the talking points and yeah, I'm hungry, I'm gone. Okay, so I've showered and I've eaten and I'm, I'm feeling good, but I don't feel so good about this topic. I, I almost never wanted to do this you know, because of the nature of the topic. Some people might disagree or it might seem like you're highlighting a place in a bad way, but just understand this video is for persons who are looking to reinvest in Jamaica. And I would tell people it's better to look at a higher budget line than a low budget line because it's the worst thing. You think that's gonna be low budget and then you come with that and then you get surprised with something that's more expensive. The next thing that hits me is a statement from Martin Luther King Jr. where he says, in the end, it is not the words of our enemies that we'll remember, but the silence of our friends. And what it is saying is, when, our, when the people that you know and you trust or you see or you look for information from don't tell you certain things, then that's where things are bad. Screw what the other naysayers say about you, you know? It's when your friends don't inform you. And over the years, I've helped a lot of people reconnect with Jamaica, whether it's to find property, whether it's to inspire them to come back. I've done a lot of that. But use this video as a video if you're looking to reinvest in the island to have an idea if you're gonna be moving to especially, primarily actually, the Kingston area. Now I was taught in English, if you're going to understand what someone is saying or to understand a sentence, you also need to understand the words in the sentence. So let's look at one of the words, Kingston. Now, Kingston, what is it? Kingston is the capital of Jamaica. This is the area where it is our biggest city and it's the most industrious. A lot of things happen in Kingston, Jamaica. Now, Kingston is very much in high demand. Why? I can name a quick reason. A lot of students, when they're chasing education, they come to Kingston because that's where the two major universities are. So they come to Kingston, they do their studies, and they fast realize after gaining a higher education, the jobs that they're going for are going to be in Kingston, or they might just fall in love with the city life in comparison to the other parts of the island, so they decide to stay. Also, the persons who are entrepreneurs, they decide that, okay, they have done with university, they want to start a business, they realize that their major customer base might be in Kingston, or most of the disposable income is inside of Kingston. And because of that, it becomes more overpopulated. 
for yourself if you're deciding to move to Jamaica, Kingston might be the best bet for you because if you're coming from the US or Europe, you might be accustomed to a particular way of living and Kingston would be the city that will be most empowered to give you that lifestyle. And the beautiful part about Jamaica is you can access the rural part. So those nice rivers and beaches that you see in videos, the longest travel time it might take you might be three hours. But from Kingston, you can get to Ocherius in like an hour and you have access to beaches and rivers and all those nice things. The next word we can look at is like cost or let's say expensive. What is expensive? Now, I'm sure some of you might be in the US and for you to acquire an iPhone, maybe you can buy an iPhone every year without any problems whatsoever. That might mean for you it's not expensive, but for me, when I think of expensive, I don't think only about myself, I think about the vast majority. And can the vast majority afford to buy an iPhone every single year? Around the world, I would still say no, and especially in Jamaica, I would definitely still say no. Now, I did mention that this video is influenced by someone I saw on TikTok. Actually, I think I heard he's pursuing a similar lifestyle like myself, which is to travel around and go to different countries and to explore the lower costs of living. And then he mentioned a couple of things. So I'll put a quick screenshot on the price breakdown of everything that he mentioned. I will go through every single one of them. With accommodation, it's gonna be the longest talking point because I believe that accommodations is usually the larger parts of your budget. Now again, not saying that Jamaica is not a good viable option for you to live because I'm almost certain a lot of you, what you're spending for rent in the US or Canada or Europe is going to be far cheaper out inside of Jamaica. But just saying that so you can have an idea of what the prices would be. All right. So in his video, he mentions that rent is 150K to 250K. Car, 80K to 130, internet, AK, JPS, 25, groceries, 50, gas, 30K, party, 50K. The 50K for party kind of hit me. I'll explain that later on. Bashko, it's kind of funny too, for 20K. Now, all right, let's look at the rent. Rent, 150K to 250K. That to me was not a surprise. It's something that I myself have experienced before. Accommodation in Kingston is very expensive and that's, purely due to the demand for it. I mentioned about the students coming to Kingston. I mentioned about people trying to seek out jobs in Kingston, and this is why it is more expensive living there. Of course, any other part of the island, the rent is gonna be far cheaper than what it is inside of Kingston. So I think whenever you're trying to make a point, it's always good to give examples. So for those of you in the comments, if you have good examples that you can share with us to find, you know, these cheap homes that people make reference to, do drop it in the comments and give us, you know, a way to find these homes as well. All right, so I'm the kind of person, I'm very passionate about my opinions. And even though I might have lived the experience, which basically factualizes what my opinions are, I still like hopping on the internet to double check because maybe, maybe I'm the dumb one. So. I searched and it says here, how much money do you need to live comfortably in Jamaica? It says a single person estimated monthly costs are 845 US dollars, which is equivalent to about 132,000 Jamaican without rent. That part blew my mind because if you know what the minimum wage in Jamaica is per week, you would realize that the, the, the math is not mathing. Anyway, it goes on to say the cost of living in Jamaica is on average 27.2% lower than in the United States and rent in Jamaica on average is 70.2% lower than the United States. So like I mentioned before, if you are living in America, it makes sense to move to Jamaica because it would be cheaper. But like I mentioned before, chances are you want to be earning the same amount of money that you were making in the US. So your option might be continue to remotely work for the company that you work for now. Where would be the best place to move to? I would 100% recommend moving to Kingston, Jamaica, just because you're gonna have better internet speeds. If you need something from, let's say a store, let's say you, you your hard drive gets damaged or you need something to get repaired. 
if you can't find it anywhere else in Jamaica, there's a large percentage you're gonna find it inside of Kingston. So I quickly opened up this website and I'll, I'll try to put it on the screen and immediately it shows so many breakdowns, just so many different things, man. It, it, it already is just blowing my mind. So many costs that you wouldn't even factor in. It's just so many things. Now, before I move into accommodation, let me point something out. I think a lot of people who, who live in Jamaica and would say, oh, these prices are not right, you can live cheaper, are the people that don't realize that they have a survivor's mentality. They have learned over the years how to make something out of nothing. I'm one of those persons. I grew up in that experience. We learned how, as Jamaicans, we are very versatile. We'll, we, we will make it work. But we don't notice that some of these simple essential things we are going without. For example, I would say a proper health care or having, let's say, a dental plan or having a health plan. Just some of these simplest of things or just knowing that this is my rule of thumb. Any job that you work at, your hourly wage should be able to give you your lunch comfortably. You should be able to work for one hour and you're able to buy yourself some lunch. If you have to work two or three hours just to feed yourself to go back to work, something for me is just, something for me is just not, it's just not adding up. All right, so let me share my own personal experience with renting in Kingston, Jamaica. I too have experienced very cheap rent in Kingston. I moved to Kingston when I was 21 years old, just like I mentioned, to chase education, to go to university. And I was fortunate. This would blow your mind. The rent that I paid was 30,000 Jamaican dollars per month. It did get increased to 35,000 at one point, but the part that would blow your mind it was in a great neighborhood. In Jamaica, we would refer to it as Uptown Jamaica. Um, it was a six bedroom house, multiple bathrooms, big yard space, relatively a safe community. Here's the thing, like I mentioned before, not because I experienced it means that it is the general for everyone else. My situation was unique. The owner for the house lived abroad. Like the typical story we hear all the time, Jamaican moves to the US and for some reason they fall in love with it, they just never return home. So they had the property there and a typical story that I've noticed over the years is returning or whatever residence you would call them, they have the house empty and they want to prevent theft in the house. So they will probably get like a landscaper, in Jamaica we call a yard boy. And this person would live in a small section of the house, they would take care of it, and then that would solve that problem. Unfortunately, whoever they had at that place kept ruining it and they decided, hey, we're just gonna rent it so that we can have someone living there and occupying the space. I was a part of that someone. Now. Here are some of the things that happened while I lived there. And in no way, shape or form will I ever knock this place because it helped to start me as a person. It helped to remove the high overheads as I grew into an adult. Roaches. I will say this without, without prejudice. If you were paying a low rent, you have to take into consideration that the owner of this property has to pay property taxes, they have to maintain the place, and if your rent is low, they do not have a lot of money to really do these things. Anything that they invest in the house is coming from their pocket. And let's be, let's be factual, a business is not a charity. As much as you would like to have a place for a cheap price, it is not a charity. So anyhow, roaches. I did mention that this house was like six bedrooms, big, and there's multiple bathrooms, but I was only getting a section of it. I was getting like somewhere around like three bedrooms, and um, 
I had access to the living room, the kitchen, the dining room, um, and of course the entire yard. The owner, I only met like two, if not three times in my years living there. Like she hardly ever came, but when she would come, she would go into her section of the house. So that's something you might have to encounter. When you rent cheaply, you might be living with the owner of the house. Do you, is that something that you want? To each his own. Now, roaches were a problem. How did this become a problem? It was not because I was untidy or just had a bunch of garbage in the house. It's just a natural thing where if there is rooms and sections to a house that is closed off, for example, the bathroom, roaches are very much renowned to coming up through gutters and they are trying to repopulate the earth. So I would find situations where I would say like every night I'd wake up, well, every morning I'd get up and I would see like four ro roaches just, it's, it's, it's a funny, th I need to research this, but they'll just be on their back. And if you touch them, they would still move. So I, I never understood it. Now, I don't make a big fuss of things. I, I understand life to a certain degree. So I tried to solve the problem myself. You know, I would, you know, get roach spray, I would set the roach baits, and that helped the that helped the situation, you know. I'd have to do this probably like every month or so. <laughs> now, to the worst problem of them all, rats. I don't think anybody in the duration of their life should ever have to deal with rats under any circumstance at all. No circumstance should anyone have to deal with rats. But Rats became a huge problem for me. And this had nothing, again, to do with um, being untidy or leaving just garbage in the house. All right, to clarify, the area that I lived in was very fruitful. Like, literally, the yard that I lived in had over 20 fruit trees. I remember when I counted it, I was just like, whoa. I had a breadfruit tree, aki tree, several mango trees from John Bellyfold to um, East Indian to Julie, I had those. Lime tree, plum tree, um, passion fruit tree, um, pomegranate, or in Jamaica we say pomegranate, um, coconut tree, pear tree. It was heavily fruited in that yard. Now, not only my yard, but the other yards around this community had a bunch of these things. So at any given point in the year, the yard would be fruited. If there's food, there is going to be rodents, point blank. Now, I also had a gardener. This, this guy was in charge of, you know, taking care of the landscaping and cleaning up fruits and stuff like that, and he had a shed, right? And I remember there's this rat. I, I literally called him Billy Bob. Every time one of them would end, there was another Billy Bob. So there's like Billy Bob the first, Billy Bob the second, Billy Bob the third, Billy Bob the fourth. I noticed that they would like run from the roof of the house and then I, rats are crazy. I don't, there's no ladder, there's no steps, but they find a way to do their crawly thing and just get into the shed. So, okay, I knew where that was. Then I started to realize that these rats were also in, in my roof. They were literally in, in my roof. And not, not for one minute did any of those rats decide to help me with the rent. They never paid for water. They never paid for electricity. They never paid for food. Nothing. I remembered when, one night I was going to go make a sandwich or something. I look at the top of the fridge. There's no bread. And I just see my bread just floating on the floor and I was like what the hell and then I assume it's one of Billy Bob's kids I was just pulling my bread it, it's so funny I don't know if you guys experience this but I find like the the rodents and the insects in the 21st century are just not afraid of human beings they're pretty much like y'all point blank so again I understand that I'm living somewhere pretty much affordably. It's, it was almost like I was living for free, so I never made a big deal of it. So I remember that I reached out to the overseer because 
to give you the hierarchy, there was an owner who was in the U.S. and there was an overseer, which was her friend, that lived um, close by. So I let them know. And um, again, if you were supposed to pay for you know, pest control, it's going to be way more than $30,000. It's going to be ridiculously expensive. So um, what happened? I think the, the, the hole that they had... So to give you a visual, my room was an add-on to the house, right? So that's the only part of the house that had like a zinc rooftop. If those of you used to watch my videos years ago, you might have seen when I used to do beekeeping and I had bees on the roof and a bunch of different things, you might know what I'm talking about. So that part was a zinc um, rooftop. On the inside, you wouldn't see zinc. It was like a beautiful type of um, wooden design on the inside. So between the, the wooden paneling and the roof, there's obviously a cavity. So that's where they would make their bed and they would do the doggy style, they would do the lizard lap, they would do the back shots, just everything. Their solution was to put this, this stuffing to kind of stop them from getting into whatever crevice they were getting into. Whatever they stuffed in their little metal mesh sponge thing, it, it never worked. They just chewed through that and continued um, doing their, their orgies. So I decided to take it up on myself. Um, I'm certain I should have like a receipt with Amazon because like I'm trying to show you receipts so you guys can get the story. And I, I ordered like, a, like, I think it was like a hundred pack of rat traps. I went crazy. When they came, the, the traps were pretty small and I would set them and I started doing my own management of them. It became so funny because I've always been a charitable person, especially to like family and friends. So I remembered when I was living in Kingston before that as a teenager, I lived with my aunt. You know, my aunt was that person that would always, you know, anybody who needs to live in Kingston, she would give them space. So anyhow, my cousin needed space at a particular point in time. So I gave him, you know, I gave him a room there. And I had to go to the U.S. to work. And I said to him, hey, cuz, you know that the situation is here with the rats. Um, he never, he wasn't as involved with my maintenance of it. So it would appear to him like everything is good. So I had to tell him, like, I'm going away for a couple months. You have to be on top of it. Obviously, he wasn't on top of it, and the rats almost pulled him out the house. Like, I remember him messaging me. He's like, cause this is big and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, he started doing his thing, and he, you know, he kept them down. So anyhow, the rat traps. I would set the rat traps until I was just like, I don't like, I don't like having to touch these, like having to pick them up, or what else can I do? Now, I had dogs, and I never wanted to, the poison, you know, you, you understand the whole situation, poison and dogs, but I ended up having to use poison. So I would put the poison on the roof, and I would, like, tie them to, like, cinder block so that the rats couldn't move it away. They would have to take whatever they wanted to eat and bring it back to their, to their shop and do what they're doing and die. I remember one time... One of these rats apparently died underneath the cabinet. It was like just the worst experience. It was, it was the worst experience. I even learned, because I became a professor of rats, I learned that rats liked um, string. So you don't just set just food traps, you can even set traps of items. So string, you can put string on the rat traps, you could put um, cotton, just items they like to make a nest with. Anyway, enough of that story. You kind of see what you might have to go through if you're spending as cheaply as $30,000 or $50,000. I even remember at one point, rented out a room on the house for like $25,000, including of light and water and the internet, all those things. But that was done for a friend, someone who went to um, my previous high school. So they stayed there for a year. But I'm just trying to show you that that is just for a room. Like, students are willing to pay. This is students or their parents, because the parents are paying the money, are willing to pay twenty dollars to $40,000 just for a room in someone's house so that they can go to university. Imagine what the average person who is not just studying, they're actually doing something to make money, is generally paying. 
And again, most persons do not want to share space with anyone. Like most persons, I mean, come on. You've done that for like at least 18, 20 years of your life. Now on the video that I saw on TikTok, there were some comments and I'm gonna read some of the comments because I know I might get some comments like that. This is how I look at life, guys. Listen, listen before you speak. A lot of people respond just to, to respond. For example, someone can say to you, ocean water isn't blue. And if you're not careful, you can be like, what, what did you say? Of course the ocean is blue. But if you stop and try to understand what that person is saying, you will realize if you get water out of the ocean, you pour it into a bottle and you look at it, is it blue? So some of the comments, Erin, why are you living alone and paying that much for rent? I know Kingston is, is expensive, but check Saturday Gleaner and you'll find places cheaper. I'll, I'll touch on that as well. If you live alone, you don't need to pay 150 for rent. You can still be comfortable with 60 to 75K. That can work. And if you're lucky, maybe 40 to 50K. Well, this person was a bit close. I think the average running, the average running um, rental costs in Kingston, I would say on average, you can get a place for $80,000. But there are some things to factor in which I, will, which I will explain. This person goes, what do you do for work? His response was just crazy. He said, sell me front and back. This other, <laughs> this other person says, um, if I did this, I promise you the internet would break. Being an adult and living alone is expensive. I hope you people in the comments are aware that people in Jamaica actually have money. They can afford it, not because you can't. And then this person says, if me I go pay 150K for rent, better me buy an apartment and pay mortgage. So let's go back to the first, the first thing I want to address. So this person says, about 70K you can get the place for rent in Kingston, which I agree, but here's what's gonna happen. If you scroll through, let's say, for example, any of the realty companies, Century 21, um, Remax, Coldwell and Banker, you're gonna notice, if you go into that price range, like the 70 to 80K, you will see properties, but you will heavily see under contract, under contract, under contract, because people are gonna grab those up really quickly. Here's what you have to notice. People who have 150K to spend for rent, they don't spend 150k for rent because they want to. It's not a bragging right. They're not, they're not gonna search, oh yes, I only want a place for 150k and nothing cheaper. That's not the general thought process that a person has. What I'm getting at is if there's a house for let's say $80,000, the people who only have $80,000 are gonna go for this house. Also, the people who have the $150,000 are going to also go for their, this house. I'm talking about an average space, which is neat, clean, has the basic amenities. So you're gonna find a high demand there. But you notice as you go up the ranks to 100 or 150K, you're gonna find that you have a little bit more options and a little bit more leeway because those who can afford 80K they can't go as high as 150K. And then you get lucky too because some people who can afford 150K, they might be a little bit more picky and you guys get the idea. Now, this other person speaks about mortgage and I'd honestly love for someone in the comments or someone who is like a realtor, a financial advisor, a mortgage person to help other people in the comments if they can with this because Let's do quick and simple math, right? Let, let's try to understand the situation. Usually when someone is renting their property, right? They normally rent it at a mortgage price. Why? They themselves are paying a mortgage. They're gonna also add a little bit on top of it for a profit margin. Usually a nice enough profit for someone is like 15%. And then you might add five or 10% in terms of maintenance because over a period of time, people, the, the house is going to have wear and tear. When someone says that is mortgage money, I think they also forget that you need the initial down payment on the property. I can roughly say for a 
a decent enough property in Kingston, whether it be an apartment, a house, or a townhouse, whatever it is, you're looking to spend somewhere in the $30 million range. Easily in the $30 million range. And this is not somewhere that is recent refurbished and, and good. Prime example, where I was living before, where you know I was having those issues, um, nice, nice land space, everything, nice community, everything. It was going for, the going rate around that area was $30 million. However, there would be other issues because there were structural cracks. I, I can go into other finer details, but I'm not going to do that on this video. But what I'm trying to say is $30 million, you're going to be buying a place where you're going to have to put a little bit of work into. Now, we figured out the average cost for a house or apartment, $30 million. Let's say you're doing a down payment because you have to do a down payment on it. It's going to be somewhere around 10%. And being smart, the more you do as your down payment is the lesser your interest rates. So let's say it's 10%. 10% of $30 million is $3 million. I'm not even going to add in the lawyer or the closing fee that you have. There's, there's other things that you have to pay for. You have to pay for even inspection. Someone to go in and inspect the house and make sure that there's no structural cracks and the foundation is good. And so let's keep it simple, $3 million. It means that, first of all, you're gonna to have to have a good job and if you're making over $150,000 in Kingston, Jamaica, you're on your way because many people don't make that amount of money. So, yeah, you're, you need to be making at least $150,000, which you yourself are not even touching. Plain savings. Now, if you are from Kingston and you have your mom and dad and you have a place to stay, it becomes more possible. You know, and I think, I, I honestly think it, it, it's kind of unfair if you're a child and let's say your parents could take a little bit of help and you don't contribute to life. But let's say your parents are well off for some reason and 150K. Most persons don't have that situation. Most people have to start out in some form of rental. So you say you can get a cheaper rental then. Let's say a cheaper rental for 50,000. The document I just showed you says the average cost for you to live excluding <laughs> excluding rent is somewhere around 130,000. Okay, let's just say that you're a miracle worker and you can live off 50,000. So 50,000 for rent and 50,000 is gonna split between your utilities, your food and your transportation. It still means that you need to be pulling in at least 250,000 for you to be living and at the same time, saving that 150000 towards your mortgage for the down payment on your property. Now, $3 million divided by 150000 is going to be 20 months, which is somewhere in the region of 1.6 years. So again, you have to be in a situation where you're able to put down this mortgage money for 1.6 years and everything else for you is clean. Long story short, most people at some point in their life have to experience rent. They have to experience rent at some point in time. Whether they move out or the job requires them to be in a different city or town, they are going to experience rent. And the sad truth is the market is really about supply versus demand. Let's dig deeper. Over the past couple years, without, without me having numbers and facts, just common sense, there has become the advent of Airbnb, which I'm using currently, Airbnb. A lot of Jamaicans are noticing that, hey, why not just put my property on Airbnb where I have a high chance of making 100% more than I would be making on rent, sometimes even 300% more is possible on Airbnb, renting out your property. So there becomes less properties that are available for people to rent. And if there's less properties available for people to rent, then it means that the demand goes up and the rents also goes up as well. 
for those in the back who just cannot understand what I'm trying to say is if I rent a property one year and I say, I say, okay, this property is going for, let's say I'm a developer and I say, okay, I'm renting this apartment for a hundred thousand dollars and I realize a hundred people come for this property. The next unit that I'm going to rent, I'm not going to rent it for a hundred thousand dollars. The next time I do an extra development, I now realize that, whoa, I have a hundred people that can't afford this property, that need this property, they're gonna make it happen. And do bear in mind, again, some of these people who are renting, they're not renting just out of luxury, it becomes a necessity. Now, someone did mention about searching the classifieds for cheaper places, and I agree. I'll give my experience with the classifieds. It's, it's, it's not my first choice. Now, as a kid, I used to love surfing through the classifieds because it was a place where I could dream. I love cars. And I remember that I saw a BMW, it said it was in great condition and all the nice words. Now remember, it's the classifieds, you can't see pictures. I think the last time I checked the classifieds, maybe even two years ago, even still online, I was not seeing pictures. It was just purely words. And I guess it's just people who are being cheap. People, people say that people prefer to use the classifieds because they don't have to pay a realty company. And it gets me thinking, if you don't want to pay a realty company, you know, a, a percentage of the first rental month, how can I expect that you are going to help me if I have a situation at the house? Let's say something is rotting, you know, termites. How can I trust that you will pay for the upkeep of your own property. If you think about it, when a person rents a house, they're renting a house for at least a year. Most times it ends up that you're there for two or three years. Let's say you eventually want to move into your mortgage property, you're gonna be in a lower scale property for two to three years. If you're not willing to make the investment just to advertise your place and to get the clientele that you want, how, how, can I, how, how can I trust that? You, you're not even willing to pay for a picture to promote your own property. Back to my story. I saw this car in the classifieds and I reached out to my uncle and I said, uncle, could you follow me to go look at this car? He was just like, all right, cool, no problem. We went to some part of Jamaica. It was, it was like a rural part and saw this car immediately i was just turned off i was just like this is not what i envisioned it as and i was okay with the project car but nothing about the car looked like you would have thought um, the owner for the car wasn't even there after i told him i was going to come and look at the car i had to speak with his wife uh, or his girlfriend whoever she was she never even knew where the key was it was probably like a half an hour to an hour before she found the key put it into the ignition, thinking we we're gonna get a start. It didn't even start, y'all. And I was just like, wow. So that was my initial turn off with just the gleaners. Like I, I already realized that you're gonna find problems. Now, um, talking with Jilly, she mentioned that she too also loves surfing through the classifieds. So she would just for fun, you know, call up people and then go and look at properties and see how they are. And, she mentioned that you can find some good ones. My thinking is this. If your property is in high demand and then you end up getting, let's say, 20 calls on a Saturday or a Sunday, and then 15 of these people don't want the property or want to lowball you on your, whatever it is, it gets annoying as a seller. So at some point, someone that's gonna call you who really wants a property is gonna get this attitude from you, this hurry up and buy type of vibe. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Then on the flip side, if the property is great, it's gonna go very quickly. I could elaborate more on this, but another day. Using a realtor. I have to just plug my mom's information in here. My mom, not because I know her personally, is an amazing realtor an amazing person in general, very, very hardworking, very dedicated, very ethical. I've literally seen my mom help people who are living in England or overseas acquire properties in Jamaica. I've seen her um, help people to get their titles sorted out, you know, because they 
there is this crap because Jamaica is a very slow paced country when it comes down to documentation and getting things in proper order. I'm going to put her information in the description box. So if you're thinking of getting a property in Jamaica, whether it's a rental or buying one or land, whatever it is, reach out to her. Amazing, amazing, amazing realtor. Now, even though I'm more for for realtors, it's not necessarily foolproof or the best. I think the best advantages are you get to see the properties immediately. So you know, okay, this is what it looks like. So you have an expectation. Um, the downsides are a lot of the times they don't update the websites enough. So you think that a property is still available and then it's not. So it's like you're calling for no reason. But anyway, let me let me give my experience. So when I was considering moving, I reached out to a realty company. I think it was during the COVID time as well. So um, how it works is you reach out to them on the website. Someone will call you up and then they basically put you with the realtor. So I got a realtor and I probably got two realtors. I probably started with two realty companies. One, one girl was just like, she was just not on the ball. And I promise you, I'm the kind of person, if I, if I say I want something, I want it. It's not, it's not talk. Anything that stops me from doing something is if it's stupid. So I didn't even want to talk about her situation. So screw that one. Then I went with another company gave her my MLS numbers, told her everything that I might have want. So I would go and I would search her properties on her website for her company. Then I would just give her that on WhatsApp. And what I found out that was happening, she kept on wanting to recommend her personal property. So if you don't know, realtors have access to all the properties in the database. However, they will get the full commission for the ones that are under their name. They can, however, sell other people's properties, but it has to be done as a joint effort. So they might get 50% of the money and not all. And then I believe rentals are not the most coveted things to sell because you don't get a high percentage on rentals. You get a bigger percent. It's more, long story short, if you're renting a place for 100,000, the percentage you're gonna get for the first 100,000 is minuscule. If you're selling a place for $10 million, you guys get the idea reach out to this lady and the problem that I kept having was she kept on wanting to push her her properties some of them ended up being like 200,000 so I said hey listen lady I'm willing to go up to 150,000 the reason why I chose 150,000 when I did my own rough research I was realizing that most of the other places that were like 80 or 70,000 were always under contract already they were off the market so I said, I will, I'm willing to go up to 150,000. Worst case scenario, 200,000, but it has to be a stunning place. Now you might be wondering, 200,000, that's ridiculous, bro. That's like a lot of money, you must be rich. You have to also remember that my home is also my office space. So instead of me just having a place that I sleep and then renting out an office space, I put everything as one. Whether it be me doing uh, my personal business on the side, or me doing YouTube where I have to edit and have a safe place to have my, my equipment and tools and things like these. Like, for me, it's more than just a rental space. So I was willing to go up to the 200,000. Because, for example, for a YouTuber, I can do a video here because I know the walls aren't dirty. The walls aren't dirty. Things aren't just falling apart. It looks, it looks good for the camera. So you guys get the idea. Anyway, she kept falling. She kept flaking on me and saying this, that, devil knows what. I decided to take a break from searching for a place. Funny enough, people always reach out to me in terms of Airbnb. They have a property that they want to, to promote. A subscriber of mine said, hey, could you check out this um, Airbnb for me and promote it? I was like, all right, cool. I went there and I did some videos. So it's a win-win. I did some videos. Like I said, my home and my space is not just a liability, it's also an asset. So I did some videos there. For those of you who have followed me throughout the years, you might know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I remembered I was single at the time, and it was a big, it was a big, it was a big apartment. And I said to my cousin and his girl, I was like, "Hey, bro, why not come over? Take your girl with you. You know, give her that this experience." And they had their room and AC and everything. And I had my room, and it was a great time. Pool, gated, everything. I think I had told the lady I wanted to three days. We spent the three days. Then I 
enjoy the space so much, I was just like, I feel like this is where I want to be. So I said to her, you know what? I want to extend my time. I'm paying for two. I'm that type of person. Not because I know that you will give me something for free. I'm going to push the limit. So I said, I'll pay for two. I think the, the apartment costed like a hundred and hundred and a little bit per, per, per night. So I stayed the extra two and then it was time to go. When I was leaving, I remembered looking to my left and if I can find these pictures, I'll post them up. I saw this realty company, not a very popular one, but I, I saw this realty company and I was just like, I wonder if there's an apartment here that I could possibly rent. So I called them up. Long story short, I got connected with a realtor. Um, he, was, he was very efficient, got my property rented, and I was good to go. Those are my personal experiences. For me personally, I think if you're looking to get a property in Kingston, Jamaica, a safe amount to come with, I would say is $150,000. You're going to have some nice options. It shouldn't be as hackling. You can find them for $80,000. It depends on the time of year. Because again, people might be building new properties. People might be moving out of rentals. A lot of things, a lot of things play into, into renting a property. We can go into that. This section has been so long. I told you already, accommodations is going to be the biggest section. The others are going to be a lot quicker. All right, let's move to the next thing. So the next thing on his list, he said car 80K to 130K. I don't like speaking on things that don't necessarily apply to me because I won't have good and valuable information. Uh, for me in my life, I've never taken out a car on a loan. I've never done that. I think it's too much of a liability for me. I've always just bought my vehicles clear and outright because again, if you're spending 80K per month on a car and let's say it meets into an accident and it's now immobilized, it's gonna take you a while to sort out things with insurance, you're paying for something that you no longer have access to. However, I remember there's a point in time where I wanted to upgrade. I told you before I love cars and I went to the Audi dealership. I think it was a, an S3 Audi, nice compact sports car. And I don't remember the cost of it. For some reason, 90K seems like it was the figure, but it might have been 190K. I don't remember what it was, but that would have been the monthly on it. Let's just say it was 90K. I think, I think based on his analysis, he might be right. He might be right. It might be that amount. So that's something that you have to factor in. Again, I would say to anybody moving back to Jamaica, if you can just buy your car, clear out, it makes a lot of sense. Or even if you buy a used car that you can, you know, buy the parts, get it run, up and running, I would suggest that as well. The good thing about Jamaica is that for me, the maintenance for vehicles are very cheap. To change brakes, to change parts and stuff is way more affordable than what it would cost in the US. Now the internet, that point he has on, it's, it's bang on. The website that I checked was basically saying the same thing. What I used to pay was basically the same amount. JPS, wow. This could be a very long topic, but I'm not gonna stay too long on JPS. He mentions 25K to 50K, it's quite possible. Um, in a nutshell, when I was at the first house in Kingston, my, my, I don't remember what it, what it was. If I can find this information like from an old email, I'll, I'll post them up. But my electric bill, I think, was like maybe the most $15,000. But this was due to like older appliances. So like the old fridge, I, I might have mentioned it was a furnished apartment. So it had a bunch of older stuff. So yeah. I remembered when I when the fridge broke down, wasn't working anymore. And it's one of the reasons why I even moved as well. Just to let the lady know that, okay, the fridge isn't working. And like, if, I think when, when folks get older and they live in the US, sometimes they believe what they leave in Jamaica is like two years old, but they don't realize that they've been away for like 10 years. So <laughs> that's for another story. So I got a new fridge. And I remember the, the electric bill drastically, drastically dropped. So I think I was averaging, let's say, ten, eleven thousand dollars. However, when I moved, my electric bill obviously went up. In Jamaica, it's it's funny that we will say that depending on what area you live, your electric bills can be more. But it was more due to the fact that because it's an apartment, 
you have to use electric stoves. So it was an electric stove and the fridge was bigger. I remembered even when I put my fridge on vacation mode, let's say I was going camping for a week or whatever, and I put the fridge on vacation mode, which is the most efficient mode, $5,000 at the end of the month. When I travel and I go away for an entire month, $5,000. So my electric bill, I could say, even on my skin PS was like 15,000 Jamaican dollars. And bear in mind, I have everything as an LED. I even have smart technologies where if I leave a light on by accident in the bathroom, Alexa would realize that, hey, no one's in here, let me turn it off. Or I would just tell her to turn it off. So I was very efficient with my electricity. The kicker is air conditioning. Jamaica can get very, very hot. And people who have AC and they go, oh, I need to turn on my AC too hot. The people who don't have an AC will think that a person is being hype, but it's not being hype. You have access to something, you are not comfortable, what do you do? I hated using my air conditioning. I primarily use it whenever my girlfriend will be over and we're about to. Yeah, I don't think any woman likes being in a very hot room, so I turn on the air conditioning for like two hours, you know, once we get done, and then boom. And then when it got very, very, very hot in Kingston, I would then turn on the AC for like two hours, then it would go to sleep, and then the room would be, um, it would be a nice temperature straight back to the morning. Because the beautiful thing about, you know, these more modern apartments is they're better insulated, so they will keep in, you know, good temperatures. So when I would turn on my air conditioning, let's say I would operate it for three times per week when I just could not bear it for two hours, so that's like six hours per week, bro, my, air, my, my, my electric bill was like $25,000, $25,000. In his video, I mean, he's saying like he has to have his AC, so I'm assuming that he uses it constantly, so $50,000 is not a stretch. So bear in mind, you want to come to Jamaica for, for the tropical weather and the, the beaches, it gets hot at night. <laughs> so yeah, if you like to have a comfortable rest, you might be looking at 50,000, but I would put it down to $25,000 if you have air conditioning in your house. And let me clarify, when I say air conditioning in your house, I'm not talking in the living room, I'm talking about only your bedroom, nowhere else. I'm talking about only in your bedroom. I think my air conditioning was like a, a 18 BTU um, air conditioning, so it wasn't a big one. It was just enough for like a, a small room. The next thing is groceries. And in his budget, he mentioned between 50 to $100,000. And that, to be honest, is subjective. It depends on the person, it depends on your age, your sex, your height, you know, are you a bigger person? Are you a vegan? So many things you have to factor in. Um, a rule of thumb, let's say for example, if you want to buy, let's say you're eating out and not at any high level restaurant, just a regular corner shop. So let's say fried chicken and rice and peas in Jamaica, you can get a meal for let's say $500. Let's now say that you're gonna eat that same meal, which is a full meal for three times for the day. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that would be $1,500 per day times 30 days in a month. That is $45,000 if you are eating just street food, just foods from a corner shop, nothing over the top, $45,000. Now in truth, if you get a little bit more frugal or more economic, of course you can cook your own meals and make them. So all of these things you can bear in mind to make your, your food budget a lot less. However, for myself, in my experience, it doesn't matter. Once I go into the supermarket, I'm easily spending 5,000 Jamaican dollars. It doesn't matter what it is. If I go in there and I decide I'm gonna buy a sneaker bar, and I go, okay, I got my sneaker bar, then I'm like, well, I already paid the gas to be at the supermarket, let me pick up a couple other household things. And me, when it comes down to shopping in the supermarket, I know prices. I like to look at the prices and see what's the best thing. I don't necessarily go for a name brand unless it really affects the taste. Um, it's easy $5,000. I'm kind of weird in the sense I don't, I don't like buying in bulk, like going to the supermarket and shopping for an entire month. My pet peeves for that is I hate when I buy like produce and I just for some reason just don't decide to cook or eat out or eat at home and then these things spoil or I just don't feel for whatever I got. So I prefer to like shop 
maybe two times or three times per week and I would just say, okay, I want this meal this day and that day. No matter what, it's going to always be $5,000. So again, based on the, the mathematics I use for $500 per meal, it would work out to about $45,000. And you can definitely cut that by really economizing. But I would say for the average person who just wants to get a couple of things that they know they like, I'm talking about you want to have some snacks in the house, you want like some cheesy, some Doritos, some banana chips, you know, maybe you want to have, you know, a small thing of ice cream, you know, something like that for the month. If you start adding those simple, those simple little treats, things that I don't think they are something that a human being should not have at any point in time, you can easily see $50,000 on your bill for the month. Now, the water bill. Water bill might have not been something you saw on his list because really, water bill is very cheap in Jamaica. Um, on average, I've seen me pay, let's say, 1500 and the highest would be $2,500. Um, yeah, so anywhere between $2,000 is enough to cover your water bill in Jamaica. Now, gasoline. He mentions gasoline to be between 30K to 60K. 60K for me is super high. You're probably running Uber or running a taxi on the side. I don't know, but 60K for me is very high. However, in my experience, yeah, pardon this, the remotes always end up somewhere in the house. My experience um, is might be a little bit limited or ill-advised because I've never really had a job where I had to like go back and forth no, office and home, office and home every single day. However, I did drive, uh, the most gas guzzling car I ever drove was a diesel SUV, you know, and it would cost me like $15,000 to fill the tank. Most cars in Jamaica might cost you, like a regular car, it might cost you about ten dollars or $9,000 to fill your tank. For me, it was like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000. And I would fill my tank maybe twice per month. However, I was traveling around the island, so I would be going out of town a lot, you know, going to find camping spots. The difference is, again, it wasn't like I was driving to a camping spot, going to a camping spot, going to a camping spot, going to a camping spot. It was really going to the camping spot, chilling out there for a couple of days, and then coming back home. So I would say, I would say $30,000 seems about right. Can you get it less? Yes. Again, I was factoring only for work. Human beings, we do also need some level of entertainment and we have other responsibilities apart from just going to work. So maybe you want to have a drive out to the beach as opposed to driving to, to work. You know, certain things like that to keep you sane. Because like it or not, all work and no play does definitely make Jack a dull boy. Then he moves on to say partying 50K, which <laughs> it kind of made me laugh for a little bit. And... These things might, when someone says they put a budget for 50K for going to parties, it might seem damaging to an argument. I saw comments where people say, say your family is rich without saying your family is rich because they see simple things like, oh, 50K to go to parties. Now, bear in mind, I did mention all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So even though that might not re represent with me, there are other things that you might like that you're spending a bunch of money on that you don't even realize. It might be buying car parts, it might be buying, I, I have bought so much ice cream since I've been here. I, I am a sucker for ice cream, I'm a sucker for plantains. So I will spend on these things without thought because I love it. Now if you think about a person who parties on average, just a person who probably goes to two events in Jamaica. If you want to go to a decent event, I'm talking about an event that can give you a nice experience, you know, include a little bit of food and, you know, alcohol and just a nice vibe, you are looking to spend at least $5,000 on an event ticket. Especially after COVID, it was like the, the, the promoters wanted to make back all the money that they missed out on and the prices of certain things just kind of skyrocketed. So if you think about that lightly and you go to two events for the month, that's easily $20,000. So let's say $10,000 per ticket you've already hit $20,000 for an event experience. That doesn't include, most of these nice events are outside of Kingston, so they take you on this adventure to this other place. You're gonna have to factor in, again, fuel money to get there. Clothes, let's not even get into this story because we will never end. <laughs> he then goes on to say the Bashko and emergency money is $20,000. I don't know. In truth, 
whenever you're working, you're supposed to be putting aside a certain percentage of that for each their own. Everybody makes a different amount of money, so their savings would be different. However, it's, it's, it's not far-fetched what he said. Now, what actually blew my mind is when he said the range breakdown is Oh, what the hell? He said 413K to 718K, non-inclusive of savings. 413K. Honestly, I, I don't see that happening unless you are, you're paying people or you're buying things to make more money with. It's, it's, it seems a lot because a lot of us do not make that amount of money. However, a lot of us too don't, necessarily have a budget many people don't set aside strict budgets and actually observe them so i can't tell you how much money people move around but i promise you some people are making a series of money that they don't even realize that they're making let me explain a lot of jamaicans are hustlers meaning that jamaicans we have this honestly even though people might not agree jamaicans are very hard-working people, especially, especially whenever we are incentivized. If we're not paid enough, then obviously there's going to be problems. But once a Jamaican is incentivized, I, I, I might be wrong. Knock me if you think I'm wrong. But we work very hard. So a lot of Jamaicans will find a hustle. It's, it's very common. You will see a lot of females in the workplace. They will, they will sell like Victoria's Secret panties or bath and body work type things. Like they will do additional things to make it work. So yes, you're getting paid $80,000 per month, but you're not even factoring that you are making maybe an additional $30,000 to, to accomplish these other things. And you don't even notice that, wow, I actually spent $100,000 this month. So that's that. Now, in short, I haven't touched on a lot of things. I haven't even spoken about essential things like getting a haircut. As a male, for me, my haircut costs $1,400 in Jamaica. You can get it for cheaper, probably even $500, but I would put it on average at $1,000. The average Jamaican male, I would suggest getting a haircut at least twice per month, especially when you're working with people. You want to look good in the office and not just only look good for the office, but even for your own self-esteem, you want to look good, feel good, and be presentable. Whether you have locks or low cut or high cut, just look presentable. I shouldn't even touch on what the females have to encounter because for them to maintain their hairs, mind blown. I've, I remembered once paying for Jilly's hairstyle for like $15,000. I've heard her paying like $9,000. I think this is where we're going to end the video. <laughs> if you guys have suggestions and comments, leave them in the video. Help someone else to probably save some money. Like I said, if you have a property that, you, that you're looking to rent out yourself, you know, leave it in a comment or something. Reach out to another person who are, you know, are in need of this. And especially if you know of any other countries that people can move to and actually live you know, a fairer lifestyle, drop it in the comments as well. Of course, we all know that certain people have the capabilities of doing this. So if you work remotely, then this will work best for you. I almost forgot. Thankfully, I remembered. Speaking of properties, I said I would share the price of this Airbnb. So this Airbnb per month, of course, is at a discount. It's somewhere around 900,000. <sighs> Jamaican figures are killing me. This Airbnb is somewhere around 900 US dollars per month. So it's averaging somewhere like 30 something, like $35 per day, which is quite affordable. I've, I've been to cheaper, but when you look at it, you're getting electricity. I can run the air conditioning for as long as I want. So I'm comfortable now. I have air conditioning consistently. I don't worry about the electric bill. The water bill is also included. And of course, well, not all, but some. This one actually has Netflix. So I could be saving on a Netflix bill, electric, water. Everything is put into one bubble. Sometimes in Jamaica, you have to be watching the app and you go, oh, wow, I've already used $10,000 of my, of my electric usage. I don't want it to go to 15. Here, I don't quite worry about that. I just use things in moderation and so on. So 
I hope this video will help someone in some way. Let me stop talking. Thank you for watching this video. Remember two things, love nature and adaptation, and boom! Remember to keep the link. I am tired. Oh my God, I'm done with this video. Jaja, I hope you find information, you know?